today we are going to be learning about algebraic identities. An identity is an equality which is true for all values of the variable. That is, given some LHS for any variable, it is equal to the answer which is obtained on the RHS. So I will explain better with an example. Now, there are three main identities which any middle school student or an 8th grader would need to learn. And honestly, these will come in handy in the higher classes as well. So here we go. The first identity which we are going to be learning is a plus b, the whole square, and that is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab. Alright, so before I explain, let me write the others as well. So second is a minus b, the whole square. And that's also the same as the previous, except that here it's a minus. So it's a square plus b square minus 2ab. And the third one would be a plus b times a minus b, which equals a square minus b square. Now, this third identity is pretty important and I'll get to that why in some time. So let's quickly begin with the first one. Let me start with the demonstration. So let's assume that A takes a value 10 and B takes a value 9. What we are trying to do here is we are going to prove that A plus B the whole square is equal to A square plus B square plus 2AB done separately. So first on the LHS we have A plus B the whole square. And that is 10 plus 9, the whole square, which is 19 square. And that gives me a value of 361. So my LHS is equal to 361. Now what about my RHS? My RHS goes as A square plus B square plus 2AB. Now in place of A, I am going to substitute 10. So that makes it 10 square. In place of B, I am going to substitute 9 and that is 9 square plus 2 times 10 times 9 and that eventually ends up being equal to 361 again. So there we have it. This is an identity where A plus B whole square which is your LHS ends up being A square plus B square plus 2AB for any given value of A and B. So it's true for all values of the variables a and b. Right? So let's do the same thing for the next identity which is a minus b the whole square and that's equal to a square plus b square. As I said earlier the only difference between the two identities is in the sign. So the other one had a plus here, so the plus 2ab. Now this one has a minus, therefore minus 2ab. Okay, and uh, this time I'm going to take the values of a as equal to 20 and b as equal to 1 to keep things simple. So LHS, as we said, is a minus b the whole square and that is 20 minus 1 the whole square which again is 19 square and that's since we found out earlier 361. Coming to the RHS, we do it exactly the same way which we did for the previous one but with the sign change. So in place of A it's 20 square, in place of B it's 1 square and in place of minus 2AB we have 2 times, 20 times which is 361 as we see again these two are equal so again LHS ends up being equal to RHS therefore again it's an identity now the third one as I said is the most important one and before I tell you the importance where can it be used let's just do a small example
Okay, so my example for the day will be first of all, I take identity. So it will just be a minus b, which is a square minus b square. Now let's say that I'm going to multiply 49 times 51. Now I need to come up with two numbers which resemble a and b in both the multiplicands. So let's say, let's assume a equals 50 and b equals 1. So if I substitute 50 for a and 1 for b, I end up with 50 plus 1 which is 51 and this is 50 minus 1 which is 49 incidentally. So that can be written as according to the identity a square minus b square but before I do that let's just do the long multiplication and come up with the answer which is 49 into 51 and that's 2499. Applying the identity this is my LHS, my RHS is 50 square because it's a square here therefore 50 square minus b square where b is 1 so 1 square and that is simplified 2500 minus 1 which again gives me so again we have proved that LHS is equal to RHS right so now where is this identity useful now all of us would have come across something called the Pythagoras theorem. The Pythagoras theorem is it's like you have a right triangle and this is the hypotenuse. Let me label it A B C. So according to the Pythagoras theorem, the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square on the other two sides. Simply put it's AC square is equal to AB square plus BC square. Now, what happens is generally we are given two values. Like let's say we are given the hypotenuse and we are given one of the other sides. Now, we are required to find the third side. So, to, uh, let me just give an example. Let's say AC is equal to 37 and BC is equal to 35. So, if I substitute here, I get 37 square is equal to 30, 30 AB whole square plus 35 square. Now, I do not know AB and I need to find that. So, I need to just transpose. I get AB square is equal to 37 square minus 35 square. Now, since we are not allowed to use calculators in India in school, we have to do it mentally or on pen and paper. So we need to come up with shortcuts. How do we do this without, you know, going with the long way, 37 times 37 and find out the answer. What we can do is we apply the identity which we just learned. That's a square minus b square is equal to a plus b. So 37 plus 35 and times a minus b. So that's 37 minus 35, which would end up being 72 times 2 and that gives me 144 so my a b square which after multiplication and all that i would get as 144 and a b is equal to square root of 144 and that's 12 so without the use of a calculator i just found out the value of 37 square minus 35 square using the third identity so that's why this particular identity is pretty useful and i think for today this much should be fine and uh, maybe we could in the next session practice a few more problems based on these so uh, thank you so much for watching the video